We are now live on Facebook. All right. Oh, look at you guys. James, Christine, Nick, Aziz, what's up, guys? All right. Now I'm live on Facebook, and you guys will see me bounce back and forth like this between uh, Instagram and Facebook. So uh, I apologize in advance. <laughs> this is not a dress up event. I just felt bougie as fuck. <laughs> Also, the bottom half of me is not that pretty. <laughs> I'm definitely in my cargo shorts. What's up, Nick? <laughs> All right. Uh, so I can see that I have quite a few of you guys on on uh, Instagram. I am checking Facebook right now. And should have some information here. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to focus my attention here because I feel like a lot of you guys are on your uh, Instagram as opposed to your Facebook. If I see anything pop up on Facebook, I'll turn the other direction. Uh, first and foremost, thank you guys for liking the Instagram page, for liking the Facebook page, uh, and making time. Uh, Wine Talk with Tesh is something that I have wanted to do pretty much since I left the kitchen. Um, because I needed an avenue to be able to share good wine with good people. That was like my shtick for the longest time, right? I just wanted to put good wine that I enjoyed uh, in front of people. And I'm able to do so in the sales world, uh, but obviously it's much more limited because I can't just go out to uh, the public and sell those wines. I have to sell them to my lovely friends at restaurants. Um, so the, for this first round of Wine Talk with Tesh, uh, you guys, uh, I pointed you guys towards Suge Winery. Uh, and that was because a lot of their, well, it was barely because of the Merlot, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, but that Merlot kind of set it off for me. And I was like, okay, well, I need to partner with the winery. Uh, they make great wine. And it just kind of made sense on the first round. In the future, though, I am hoping that I can partner up with some local restaurants or some local shops uh, to be able to send you guys to them. Because that was a part of it was that like, okay, we're all kind of stuck at home. Uh, and these restaurants have a lot of wine inventory that they're sitting on. How can we help them move some product? Uh, so in the future, we will be looking to uh, move in that direction where we can help partner with some uh, restaurants so you guys can go find these wines locally and support our local businesses, all right? Um, I am in my garage. I'm in my garage. So I, have a, I have a fairly small house. Why am I in my garage? I'm in my garage because there's no other safe space in this house because my children are everywhere. Uh, so this is my only like sane, quiet place to be. Um, so that's why I'm here. Uh, what else? Uh, before we jump into the wines, I want to say a quick uh, happy birthday to my sister, Kavita, to my niece, Rhea. Uh, I love you guys. And uh, I know that you guys are watching, and I appreciate you uh, very, very much. Thanks for making time uh, on your special day. Uh, and I hope that you guys' drive-by uh, happy birthday wishes went really well. Which, by the way, incidentally, this is really funny. 2020 is the only year where a drive-by is ever considered a cool thing. Drive-bys aren't cool, homie. Don't do that, all right? <laughs> um, but uh, moving on. So, Suge Winery. First things first, if you bought the wines, please pour yourself the Chardonnay and start enjoying. Uh, if you bought the cheeses to go with the uh, pairings uh, or to go with the wines, then please, uh, you know, my, my whole thing when I eat and drink wine is sip, bite, sip, because uh, you want to taste the wine and get what you can out of the wine uh, and then kind of figure out what the food that you're do you're enjoying uh, does to the flavors in your mouth and then vice versa once you have the flavor of the food in your mouth you want to go back to the wine and find out what it does to the wine so sip bite sip uh the chardonnay is to go with the supreme uh, brie i think on my post i recommended marin french i wasn't able to find marin french even myself uh so i got a different brand but regardless if you found a uh brie that's nice and creamy they'll go great with that chardonnay so don't wait for me on any cues on when to drink your wines 
uh, or anything like that. Because the last thing I, I really dislike about any kind of tasting is when they tell you when and what to do. So if you, by all means, are in the mood to slam your Chardonnay, go for it, man. This is a free world, homie. Do you, boo-boo, okay? Um, but while you guys sip on the Chardonnay, I am going to uh, tell you a little bit about Suge and what makes it so special. Um, Suge Winery um, has been around for quite some time. <laughs> oh, there you go. Only place is their booth at Farmer's Market Sunday under the freeway. Thank you, Aziz. Love you. Oh, and Nick, you've been drinking. I see you, baby. Uh, <laughs> um, Suge Winery. Suge is really cool. Why is it cool? Pretty much it boils down to Suge is cool because of Walter Suge. Walter Suge is a bit of a badass in the wine world, right? So he was born in Germany from the Rheingau region. He, in 1959, he moved over to the, here to the States. He had a couple of odd end jobs. He worked at EJ Gallo. Uh, eventually, he found himself at Phelps Winery. And if you guys aren't familiar with Joseph Phelps Winery, uh, get familiar. They make amazing wine. Um, Walter Suge, really, he was their, their head winemaker when they opened. He helped them pretty much get on the map. He made phenomenal wine for them, uh, including but not limited to, right, the Insignia, which Insignia uh, Insignia is a Bordeaux-style red blend that is a bit of a cultish wine. People uh, kind of go ape over that, right? They love it. They enjoy it. Uh, and we got a few more people coming on here. So for those of you guys who are just now joining, Ralph, uh, Mariana, I see you guys. I love you. Uh, enjoy your wine at your leisure. Uh, if you have the wines, Pour the Chardonnay and uh, and start sipping. If you have the cheese to pair with it, then by all means, sip, bite, sip, uh, and enjoy. Um, back to Walter Shook. So he was fantastic. He moved over, right? He landed at Joseph Phelps, and he started making wines for them, uh, including uh, Insignia, which is a Bordeaux-style red blend. He helped them kind of hand-select some vineyards that really went into their... They're like the backbone of their Cabernet Sauvignon uh, come from vineyards in Rutherford and in Stag's Leap District uh, that Walter Suge helped select. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so big deal, right? However, what people don't really necessarily know about Walter Suge was that Pinot Noir was his passion. Pinot Noir uh, for Walter Suge was like his jam. It's from his hometown, right? He's from Rheingau, Germany. So... In Germany, they make Spat Burgunder, which is Pinot Noir from Germany. And uh, he loved it, so he really wanted to make it. Uh, he went to Joseph Phelps and was like, hey, I, I have this grape that I really want to grow. I really want to produce it. And they were like, yeah, so produce it. So he did. Unfortunately, the market didn't really allow for him to continue to produce that wine. Um, because at that time... Bordeaux varietals were really booming. So nobody was really buying Pinot, right? So Phelps decided to discontinue it in the late 70s, like 1979, 1980-ish. Uh, Phelps Winery decided that they were just going to discontinue the wine program entirely. Sorry, the Pinot Noir program entirely. Uh, at that time, Walter Shug decided that doesn't really vibe for him, right? He loves Pinot. So he decided to go out and, and do his own project, and he did. Um, and by the late 80s, he had purchased their estate, which is now uh, in Carneros on the Sonoma side. Um, and Suge became a thing, right? And now they're known for the Pinot Noir, their Chardonnay. Um, unfortunately, right, time passed. Walter Suge did pass away. He passed away in 2015. Um, and his son, Axel, is now at the head of the winery. Uh, and he's fantastic. He is my go-to guy for anything sugar related uh, and they took especially good care of not only me, but us for anybody who was able to purchase the wines. Um, you know, he, he was the one who basically got us that, that nice little discount. Um, so going to the Chardonnay, uh, everybody can hear me. Okay. Yeah. On Instagram, can I get some thumbs up or on Facebook? Everybody can hear me. Okay. Yeah, Axel, for real. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with yeah. Okay, so the Chardonnay, going back to the Chardonnay. So if you have it, enjoy, right? One of the things that, okay, perfect. One of the things that I really dislike about a lot of virtual tastings right now is that, um, 
is that you do a virtual tasting and uh, you're pretty much just watching people drink wine. And so with Wine Talk with Tesh, I was really hoping to change that, right? How do I partner with, with my community and how do I partner with wineries that I love and get these wines in front of people uh, so that way we can not only get together virtually uh, and talk about them and drink them, but that you guys can actually drink them too. So I hope you guys appreciate it uh, and enjoy it. Um, that's a part of it, right? Definitely want to make sure that we can enjoy the wines together. Uh, the Chardonnay, what I love about the Chardonnay, okay? And I typically Chardonnay, California Chardonnay in particular, uh, is not my jam, right? I think that a lot of us probably know that uh, that California Chardonnay very classically has a style, and that's to be rich, buttery, oaky Chardonnay. Uh, that is not this Chardonnay. This Chardonnay is quite the opposite. Uh, it has, it's a very, I don't want to say lean Chardonnay, uh, but it has a very high acid uh, and a strong backbone. Uh, thank you, Mariana. Love you. <laughs> uh, it has a very high acid uh, backbone to it, right? Which uh, is very unlike most rich buttery styles of California, California Chardonnay. Um, it's got a ton of citrus. It's got a ton of pear. Uh, a lot of like baked or like spiced apples uh, in terms of like its flavor profile. I don't want to call it lean because I think that the fruit really shines here and it's a really good expression of Chardonnay and what Chardonnay fruit typically should taste like, right? Um, if you have the uh, the cheese or if you have any kind of brie in front of you, now's a good time to try it. And then give it a little good wash down with your wine. Nah, you're good, Mary. <laughs> and you'll begin to see what I'm talking about. If you have the wine and you have the cheese, you see what I'm talking about when I talk about like that acidity? It really cuts through the richness of that brie. It kind of like almost like re reopens your palate, re-cleanses re your or refreshes your palate for the next bite. The cheese has a nice like funkiness to it on the end, which I think how, <laughs> which I think is fantastic. I like funky cheeses. So, um, hey Neelam, I'm glad you like Chardonnay. That's my oldest sister. Thanks for tuning in, sis. Love you. Uh, what's the temperature in my garage? Enough for me to have a few drops of sweat coming down my forehead. Uh, but again, this is the only place in my house where my kids won't just like, they, they're stoked that I have been furloughed, uh, which uh, someday they'll understand money and be like, damn dad. Right. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they're stoked that I'm home. And so they uh, are constantly begging and egging for my attention. And there's not really a place in my house for me to get away where they are not just going to be slamming the door down, uh, trying to get, <laughs> trying to get to me. Um, so anyhow, another thing with the Chardonnay, if you guys are, uh, if you guys, you know, obviously if you guys bought a bottle, you're going to have quite a bit left after this tasting. Uh, if you guys are in the mood to try something else with that wine, try making like shrimp scampi or something, something that's like super easy, right? Scampi is not that hard to make. Uh, try something like shrimp scampi, sh shrimp scampi. Uh, and wash it down with the Chardonnay, it will blow your mind. It's really, really, really delicious. Um, another thing that I love about that wine, right? We talked about it not being a, uh, a rich, oaky, buttery bomb. Um, they, there's no malolactic fermentation on that wine, right? It spends about eight months in 20% uh, new French oak. And uh, the no ML means that it's not going to have that diacetyl. It's not going to be buttery. Uh, it has a little bit of creaminess to it because they age it surly as well, right? Which means it's uh, sitting on the lease. Um, so it has a little bit of creaminess to it, but beautiful Chardonnay. Really good expression of what the fruit should taste like, all right? And Shrampy is the best. Shrampy and Scampy. It says, if I ever open my own restaurant, I'll put it on the menu for you. We'll call it Shrampy. It's Shrimp Scampy, but I'm just too damn lazy to say the two words. <laughs> all right, if you guys have the Pinot Noir, please pour yourself the Pinot Noir. So, as I mentioned before, Walter Shug's favorite was the Pinot Noir, right? This was his jam. This is what he could not do without. This is why the winery became a thing. 
uh, he could not go on without it. So this is the epitome of kind of like what Suge wants to highlight uh, because it was Walter's favorite. So uh, this wine to me is fantastic. By the way, if you were able to get the Point Reyes uh, Toma Truffle, damn, that wine, that cheese is so effing good. Like so effing good. And I, I hope that you were able to find, if not that, something similar like a truffle cheese of some sort because it's mind-blowingly good with this Pinot. So this Pinot Noir, nine months, uh, medium toast, French oak barrels. Again, 20% of it is new. So it has this nice like baking spice element to it, like a nice spiciness to it. A ton of black cherries and strawberries. Effing, yeah. That's the bomb. <laughs> That's really, really good. If um, if you guys have the cheese, um, now's a good time to take a bite of your Toma Truffle cheese and then wash that down with a little bit of your Pinot. Neelam, I see you. Um, where can you find the wines? Check out my Wine Talk with Tesh page, either on Instagram uh, or on um, Facebook, and you'll see all of my posts. Like, all, like They all direct you to the link to buy the wines. Uh, the code should still be good if you guys want to order the wines. Like, If you, didn't, if you, if you end up tasting it and you're like, I want to order more, uh, use the discount code while you can. It should still be active through the end of the month. Uh, I hope, hopefully, my friends at Suge Winery are watching uh, and that uh, they'll leave it remaining uh, active for a little bit longer. But you get 10% off your order, uh, so that'll help at least something. Yeah. When you talk about uh, wine pairings that go incredibly well together, wine and food pairings that go incredibly well together, uh, anything like mushroom or anything uh, truffle, uh, Pinot Noir is just a straight go-to, man. Like, you cannot go wrong. And this Pinot Noir in particular uh, is beautiful. It's stunning on its own. But, man, when you have it with a bite of that Toma, Toma Truffle from Point Reyes, it's off the charts crazy good. Uh, it's like a dance party in your face. Um, that's that's my professional term for it. It's a dance party in your face. So there we go. Uh, <laughs> if you are looking for other things to try this with, um, man, duck breast would go great with this Pinot Noir. If you're looking to drink it over the next few days uh, and you want to plan out some meals, right? Uh, duck breast would be amazing. Also, if you have that cheese, if you have more of that cheese, if you have a bottle of Barolo laying around, um, check out uh, any Barolo, really, with truffles. Stupid good. Stupid good. Um, they absolutely go hand in hand, right? Um, good. I'm glad to hear that, Adrian. There you go. Little Gouda. I don't know if he planted Spett Burgunder style clones for his Pinot Noir, but I will find out for you, Nick, and I will get back to you because uh, Axel's my guy. So I'll shoot him a message shortly and find out uh, what clones they used. I I don't think that they used any Spat Burgunder clones for this particular Pinot Noir, but that's not to say that Walter did not try uh, at some point in the past. So I'll find out for you, bud. Uh, everybody doing okay? We good to move on to the next wine? Am I going too fast? I'm trying to like, trying to enjoy the ride, but not, you know, keep you guys too long. Everybody good? Give me some thumbs up if you guys are good. Everybody's probably too busy eating and drinking. <laughs> all right there we go cool thanks aziz and miri thank you all right cool uh if you have the merlot pour the merlot if you did not get the merlot uh Go back to Shug Winery right now and order that, like sincerely. This Merlot, okay, so truth be told, I've been selling Shug, right? I sold Shug to wineries um, 
and I had not had the Merlot until about like two and a half, three weeks ago. I was on a house party with some friends, uh, with my friend James and, and uh, Eduardo and Michael and Jordan. If you guys are watching, love you guys. Uh, and I decided to pop this Merlot just because I hadn't had it. And it was one of those wines. I used to have this saying when I was at him, no more Merlot. You'll be fine. Trust me. Trust me on this. Um, it's... This is one of those wines where I used to have this thing when I was at the kitchen. Now, you know, I tasted a lot back then, right? On a very, very regular basis. Uh, this is one of those wines that when you taste, it makes you kind of like sit back and be like, ooh, damn, that is some good, sh right? And this wine ma literally made me say, ooh, damn. I'm pretty sure my friend saw me say it. Uh, out loud. I did like a double take and I was like, oh man. And if I was still running a restaurant program um, and I was still uh, in that position to do so, I would definitely put this wine on a pairing and it would be a part of my wine program in a heartbeat because I think uh, it is absolutely stunning. And when you try this wine, which I haven't and I'm getting parched, so I'm going to drink it. Cheers. Thank you guys again for being here. Mm. crazy good this is one of the those wines where when you drink right you kind of get a sense of appreciation for how good walter shug was at his job right this this but this bordeaux varietal uh this is the styles of wines that he made for joseph phelps and now you kind of understand maybe after having had this why Phelps had so much success with their Bordeaux program with wines like Insignia, right? Um, another fun fact about this wine, uh, it's 80% Merlot, uh, there's 11% Malbec, 5% Cab Franc, and 4% Cabernet Sauvignon. And what I found out about this wine after I was like drinking with my friends um, via virtual uh, hangout, um, I found out that all of the supporting grapes in this wine come from a region called Moon Mountain District in Sonoma. Uh, Moon Mountain District is one of my favorite regions in Sonoma. One of my favorite wines uh, is called Cayman Cashmere, uh, comes from Moon Mountain District. Uh, so I always think it's funny when you are tasting through wines and you realize that, uh, that you as a person, right, you have a style and you don't necessarily think that you have a style uh, until you realize that there are started, you start like connecting um, all these like points, these pit stops in your tasting adventures, and you go, oh my gosh, I do love wines from from this area, and whatever it might be about the soil from that area, when we talk about terroir and how it influences the grapes, right? Um, you, there is a sense of that, and there is a sense of that in this wine. I feel like um, I don't think I'm savvy enough. Uh, in order in order to be able to taste this and go like oh that's from moon mountain district uh but i was certainly excited to find out that some of the supporting grapes in this wine came from moon mountain district um anyhow this merlot if you guys haven't had the cheese go to the cheese this cheese is funky if you got the uh the cowgirl creamery uh mount tam it's funky but it is bomb and uh i think it complements the merlot incredibly well uh, I'll answer that, Phil, in one second. Um, I think that this cheese complements the wine really well, and vice versa. Uh, it's got this very like nice like earthiness to it, like a, like a little like white mushroom kind of uh, flavor profile. And Merlot in particular, this is kind of like classic Merlot. It has like this really nice nice plush texture to it, which is kind of like the differentiating point uh, of many times between uh, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, amongst other things, right? Uh, but for me personally, like I notice texture, um, and Merlot has like this nice plush texture. Um, and so, uh, this wine and this cheese complement each other really, really well. So when you try the cheese, you get this really good sense of, uh, like that earthy rustic right? Kind of funky, but not in a like bad way. But then when you wash it down with the Merlot,
Yeah. That even brings out the earthiness, the earthy side to the wine a little bit, right? Um, so, and it's highlighting the fruit a little bit and making that pop and shine a little bit more. You're definitely picking up on like the cherry, the blackberry. I kind of wish I had a Cajun ribeye right now with this Merlot from Morton's. God, I miss Morton's. I miss being out. I know you guys probably miss being out too. Um, incidentally, on that note, I know a lot of, <laughs> uh, sorry, Phil. I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of people have told me that like their tolerance levels have gone uh, the, oh, thanks, baby. I'm glad you're enjoying the cheese. My, my wife is on the other side of the wall. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying the cheese and the wine, honey. Um, the, uh, you just want to go to brunch? Me too, baby. I just want to go eat some good food, right? This pandemic has been, uh, for a lot of people, their tolerances have gone up. My tolerance has gone down. I'm not hanging out at restaurants. I have lost 10 pounds, I found out today. Uh, this pandemic has been great for my figure, okay? So let me just tell you, I'm, I'm happy about that, all right? Uh, but I miss being out and about, and I miss being uh, out in the restaurant scene. Um, so enough of that. Uh, the Merlot, going back to the Merlot, um, and Phil, I haven't forgotten about your question. I'll get to that in just a second. The Merlot, uh, spends 24 months in, uh, French, Hungarian, and American oak, uh, 20% of which is new. Uh, you really get a sense of the complexity of the wine as you're drinking it, right? And, and how much they, uh, how much work and effort they put into it with it being in different barrels. Um, so good. Uh, Kendra, good to, good to have you join. I'm glad you were able to. I know, the Cajun ribeye, dude. It's my jam. It's, yeah. Got to get a hall pass for a night and come down to Mitz. Aziz, I do. I, I really do. I feel like I'm earning my stripes, though. You know what I mean? So, well, soon enough, buddy. I will be there. Um, that's the Merlot. I, I hope that you guys enjoyed the wines, right? Um, oh, let me answer Phil's question real quick. Uh, wine adventures, right? Um, I think it, for me, the, the memorable adventure is going to be an adventure that I took somebody on, uh, as opposed to, uh, the adventure that I experienced, right? Um, I had, a, a six top come into the kitchen and, uh, you know, they, they were like, Hey, we were thinking about doing the wine pairings. And one of my favorite things to do was to put people on like a custom wine pairing. So come in, kind of tell me a, a little bit about what you like, what you don't like, and then I'll go through my wine cellar and I pick wines for you within your budget um, that I can curate, a, you know, like a, a little custom pairing to. And so I had this six top come in and uh, they were super sweet. They, you know, they had a, a nice budget, so they wanted to have some decent wines. So I kept bringing them some decent wines. And then lamb would probably go with a great tune, Neelam, with the Merlot, absolutely. Custom, yeah, you could do that, Mariana. I don't know about it anymore, but I did custom pairings uh, for people all the time. And uh, so was was going through this whole thing with them and, uh, you know, the main course, the, st the state course, as I like to call it, uh, they... I, want, I asked him if he wanted to like ball out a little bit on that course and have something a little extra special. Uh, and he said, yeah, I, I think that that would be nice. What did you have in mind? And I said, listen, I have this beautiful bottle of wine. It was 2012 uh, uh, a brew. Uh, a brew 2012 got a 100 point score. Um, I only had three bottles of it. I think I had two bottles of it left at that time. And so... Uh, he was like, he was like, how much is it? I was like, it's an $800 bottle on our menu. And he was like, you've taken really good care of us up until this point. I'll trust you. Go ahead. Let's do it. And which as a psalm in a dining room, beautiful words to hear, by the way, right? Your guests trust you. Um, and that is, a, that's where you want to be as a psalm in the dining scene. You want to have guests who trust you, who believe in you. Um, and yeah, so, so he went for it. They loved it. They came back like six months later, sat at a different table. It wasn't a six top anymore. It was a four top. Um, and about halfway through dinner, the guy kind of like turned his head at me, the gentleman who ordered the wine. He kind of turned his head and it, the, I don't know, like the light just hit right or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, I totally remember you. You sat over here last time. And he was like, yeah, you sold me that really nice bottle of a brew. And I was like, yeah, I totally remember. And, um, and he was like, oh, you know, 
we last time we were celebrating is it was a birthday but this time we came back um and it's it's more of a celebration of life his wife had passed away and so he was there with his kids and um i didn't really have any words man like he wasn't exactly an old oh, oh, but you know he wasn't like an older guy where like you know his wife passed away like there wasn't any troubles or anything they seemed young they seemed healthy um and uh i just stopped talking and i went to uh you know i went and i got them all a shot um and i you know i brought it up back to the table and we, we all had a shot together and um and they were just so appreciative of this small gesture of me kind of going out of my way to take care of them and then on top of that having a drink together in honor of his you know of his of his wife um they were really moved by it and so that was probably like the coolest adventure I think because I think that it really kind of exemplified for me uh, what I want to be in the wine community, right? Um, that's what I want to do. That's kind of the point behind Wine Talk with Tesh is like I I want to be able to put wines in front of you guys uh, that you wouldn't necessarily think to like go grab a bottle of, um, and that's uh, that's really I, I think that's a I think that's a a fun thing, and I think that's a thing that. Um, I found a lot of passion in uh, while I was uh, in that position uh, at the kitchen. So there's the story, Phil, uh, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, that is all I have for you guys in terms of this week. So uh, things that I want to say to you. Thank you guys for all of the likes, for all of the follows on Instagram, for checking out all of my posts. Um, you guys, it means a lot to me. I really hope that this can become a thing. I really want it to blow up. Um, and if you guys feel so inclined, please share the Instagram page. Please share the Facebook page. I would love to get that reach further and for further out. So I took the last, look, I took the last two, two hours a total wine. There you go. Boom. Adrian, thank you for pointing that out. Um, let me, let me comment on that, Adrian, you can buy, uh, lo locally, you might be able to find the, uh, Total Wines might carry sugar. Uh, however, if, um, if you were unable to purchase the wines, you should still be able to purchase them. Uh, check out the link on, on both of my pages. Um, and you should be able to still use the discount code. So that is still available if you want to try the wines afterwards. So this isn't goodbye. I definitely want this to be a thing. I definitely want to do it more. And I am hoping to do this roughly every two weeks. So uh, June 3rd, two weeks from now, it's a Wednesday, 6 o'clock. I hope to see you guys again. Uh, keep your eye out on my Instagram and on my Facebook page because I will be posting the next two wines that I want to future in two weeks and then again these will be wines that i'm passionate about uh that i that i think are drinking phenomenally and uh that i want you guys to have in front of you and it can just you know we can all start building our little uh our cellars together and it'll be fun so that's what i have for you guys i appreciate it uh lots of love the videos if you missed it and you were able to and you weren't able to kind of taste through with us um if you missed it, I'll repost it on Instagram and I'll repost it on Facebook. I think Facebook saves it and just leaves it up. So, um, so yeah, hopefully this pandemic thing is over uh, soon-ish and we can all get back to hanging out and being together because I love you guys and I miss you guys and cheers and, uh, and drink good wine because life is short. We should, should drink good wine. All right. All right, guys. Love you all. Appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.